Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are gonna do this fun watercolor chandelier. I really wanted to do something that was kind of architectural and just play with my watercolors. And if you'd like a real-time version of this tutorial, you can find it up now in Critique Club for just $5 a month. You have access to over 100 real-time art lessons, monthly prompts, and the ability to upload your artwork for feedback from me. Check it out for $5 a month. There's a link in the video description if you're interested. So I started off on this Arches watercolor block and I used a T-square to draw a straight line down and that's really gonna help me get that kind of hanging um, plum feel to the chandelier and then I'm using the t-square on the edge of the block to kind of just line up where the the like arms of the chandelier would be so using a um, using a little tool like this is so handy I also used it to do the straight up and down lines of the candlesticks now the photo is not perfect things are a little crooked but I decided to try to make everything as um, is uh, I don't want to say perfect because that's not really what I'm going for, but try to start off with more of a accurate, perfect um, drawing because I know that I'm going to have splashes and I'm going to have wiggles and all sorts of different things that will send candlesticks crooked and send the arms a little wonky. So I wanted to start off with the most plum, um, uh, pristine drawing to begin with, and then it would give me a little more leeway for when I go in and put the paint. The pencil I'm using to draw with is a Derwent Graphitint pencil. And if you have these in your stash, I hope this inspires you to get them out. The reason I wanted to use this is because I wanted a very ethereal look to this. I wanted it to be kind of like, um, like just caught in the shadows type look. And I just wanted to kind of like have a hint of the architecture and just be... I don't know, a little bit magical looking. So I did play with a few different color combinations just on a postcard. And let me tell you, I really recommend that. Just cut some old watercolor paper scraps down to postcard size and use them for testing out your colors and testing techniques on. And then by the time you're done your painting, you actually have like these two little mini artworks that you can either use as a base for a card if you like to make cards, or you can pop it in the mail and send it off like a postcard. You could even wax it, rub it with a little bit of um, like candle wax or paraffin wax to protect it in the mail if you're worried about things kind of reconstituting. So at this step here, I'm using one of my brushes from Craft Ammo. It is the cat's tongue brush, the half inch cat's tongue, and I am wetting everything. And I'm using this brush because it's super absorbent and I can put a lot of water down. And what I should have done actually is mixed up the colors that I wanted to use first so I could just kind of drop them in. But um, I was able to work pretty quickly and it wasn't an issue. But if you do have that issue, if like your um, your paper dries too fast on you, then you can do that. I wanted to have uh, a yellow, and um, I'm using some colors from my Supervision layered paints, but another good option would be yellow ochre, raw sienna, or if you have a uh, Daniel Smith's Gothite, I believe it's pronounced, that's a quite a granulating um, kind of yellow ochre color. It's made from PY4, all three are made from PY42 in general, or PY43, so they're very similar uh, colors. This one, I believe, is like a raw sienna with potter's pink, this one from uh, Supervision, and I will link those down below if you're interested in these. This new version that comes in the three tube packs, it comes in three different colors uh, per pack, is much more light fast than their original version of 10 supervision granulating colors they came out with. So if you've been on the fence, um, these seem to be holding up a lot better. I haven't had any issues with them changing the pans and uh, so far so good. I think I've had them for maybe, well, they should be so far so good. I think I've only had them for about six or eight months or so, but um, I'm enjoying them and um, yeah, they're, they're fun. I, I like the super granulating effects. And of course, the Schmincke super granulating paints are gonna be fantastic for this, or any paints you happen to have in your stash that are granulating, such as ultramarine blue, cerulean, cobalt blue, um, viridian, uh, natural, uh, genuine viridian, anything like that. If you have any of the Daniel Smith Primatech colors, those are gonna work well, cobalt teal. Anything that's made of the cobalt generally will granulate. So play with what you have. And um, it doesn't even have to be granulating colors. I just think it adds a certain fun effect. Oh, something else that would work really well with this is if you had some brush -o, which is like a pigment powder uh, product and you could sprinkle some of that into your really wet washes and just kind of let it burst and do its thing. So, I mean, seriously, you could throw some salt into it while it's really wet and get some texture that way if you wanted to. So don't feel like you have to run out and buy exactly what I have. You can definitely um, approximate a look with stuff you have in your stash anyway. 
Um, and I like to do that. I, I definitely like to do that before I go and I purchase something to see if it's something I'd really use. Like before I bought Brusho, I took my Derwent Ink st Ink Tense blocks and I shaved some of them and I would sprinkle those onto my work to see if I could get a similar effect. And I got a similar effect. I got a better effect though, similar to Brusho, by using cheap tie-dye kits, like with a, the dye powder. And you can get those at the Dollar Tree. You can get like the individual um, things of tie-dye powder. So seriously, um, look around your house. You might have some dye in a cabinet from an old sewing project that you could use. Just have fun with it. Obviously, um, you do want to be careful if you're worried about fading, that the colors you're using are light fast. If you're not worried about it, then go hog wild and have a great time using the stuff you have in your house. I like to add bits of like, I like to both splash water and then splash paint uh, in the background. I really wanted to pull the eye through the painting with the spatters. Something else I wanted to add was a little bit of text, but I didn't want it to be readable text. So I've got this big stamp and it's by, um, I think it was from, I think other companies probably have it because it's kind of like a public domain image. Um, and there's testing it on a postcard to see like, do I have the water ratio white right? It was way too wet. So I'm here doing a stiffer paint, uh, less water. And I'm going to test it again on this other one. And I like that. So now I'm going to apply it onto my painting. Um, but anyways, this paint was from Art Neko, which is no longer in business. But since it is Da Vinci's script, I think it's probably available from other companies too. I love using this watercolor on the block effect because this is, Da Vinci would write stuff in back, backwards and hold it to a mirror to read it. So this is in backwards anyway, in backwards font script anyway. And then by using watercolor instead of ink, it's going to be extra jumbled. So, I mean, somebody could look at this and, and, and make it say whatever they wanted. My husband said he thought the painting looked a little creepy, like there was something coming out of the, the darkness when it was all done, which I thought was really fun. Um, so I love that it can kind of be adapted to whatever somebody wants it to be. I kind of liked it the way it was at this stage, but I'm like, ah, you know, I feel like it needs something more and I didn't want to be too precious with it. So if I feel like it needs something more, I generally will just go for it. I was debated whether or not to use my metallic watercolors or to use Aqua Bronze, which is a really metallic product by Schmincke. You mix a little bit of the powder with water and it's actually made with bronze and aluminum particles. So it's super shimmery. And so I decided to go with that. Um, but you could use any metallic watercolors that you have. You could even use metallic gouache or metallic acrylic paint. Uh, just water it down a bit so it flows. And I would use your acrylic brushes just so you don't accidentally have any acrylic paint drying your watercolor brushes. But again, it's one of those experiment with what you have. And um, I also want to experiment with some spattering of this and I did it on the postcards and did it on my painting. I should have done, I didn't do it on the postcards first though. I was like, uh, ooh, wait a minute. I should probably test that out before I just go right in and do it. But it all worked out. I thought that I love copper. Copper is like, as far as metallic shades, copper is my favorite, um, like natural metallic color, but um, it wasn't as wow as I wanted it to be. And I knew the gold would stand up a little bit more. And this stuff looks like gold leaf. It is so vibrant. It's almost like foil. Um, I had some trouble mixing it up. So I wonder if maybe the aqua bronze can um, get a little more difficult to work with over time, which would be too bad because it's an expensive product. Um, I like the gold in this though, and I'm doing some spattering. You do have to water it down to get it to spatter quite a bit, and it does take away quite a bit of the brilliance. And with this product, you don't wanna like mix a bunch up and let it dry and then reuse it. You can, but it's gonna lose a lot of its shimmer when you do that. Then I went ahead and I dried this. Um, I didn't 100% dry it, but I wanted to dry it enough just so I could do some stamping over it. Um, maybe do some painting over it and uh, and not lose or not pick up too much of the gold. So here I'm gonna experiment using a white ink tense block on one of my postcards to see if I like that. And right now it looks really, really translucent, but with ink tense, the white ink tense, when you dry it, it gets more opaque. And I like the way that looked, so I decided I was gonna go ahead and do that um, on my painting. I have another script that I like too from My Sentiments Exactly, but I would recommend if you're gonna buy a script stamp for mixed media, try to find something like this one where the edges are not all aligned. It's kind of like the edges are all different lengths or the sentences are all different lengths, you know, so it's more, it's easy to like kind of tessellate the, the patterns together to make a bigger background. You don't have like that blocky edge basically is what I'm saying. So if you're looking online, I would also recommend getting a clear stamp, like even a silicone or photopolymer stamp because they have more squish, which will work better on these backgrounds. And if you can afford it, um, that stamp mount that I used, it's called a mega mount. It's expensive, it's $25, but I have not regretted it. It was money well spent. I got it from Impression Obsession um, probably about 10 years ago and I love it, but it's really great for working on textured paper because it does um, really push 
every little bit of that stamp in well. And there you have it, the finished look. I hope you enjoyed this project. I had so much fun creating it. And um, if you want to see the real-time version, be sure to check out Critique Club over in my Teachable School. I'll have a link in the video description. For $5 a month, you have access to this tutorial and over 100 more. You can upload your artwork for feedback from me and uh, you get monthly prompts as well. So uh, it helps you on your creative journey and it's a wonderful supportive community and we'd love to have you. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Until next time, happy crafting.